I live alone in a smaller house in a quiet neighborhood. I don't really celebrate Halloween, but I do enjoy decorating a little bit, and every year I hand out candy to the kids who come to my house. Usually, I get about 10 to 20 trick-or-treaters, if I had to guess. A couple of years ago, it was a typical Halloween. I had a few decorations on the front step, but not too many. I also had a bowl of candy inside for the kids, and I was just hanging out in the living room when I got home from work. Kids started arriving pretty early, but about the typical number showed up when it got dark, and it was maybe around 7.30 when there was another ring of my doorbell. I got up and answered it to see two kids dressed as some type of superheroes. They were probably about 10. I said hi to them and gave them some candy. One of the kids asked me who the guy was who ran behind the house. I was a little confused. The kid asked me if the guy lived here and was trying to scare them. He said he almost didn't go to the front step because of the guy. I still didn't know what he was talking about, so I asked him. The kid said that when they started to head up the driveway, they saw a man dressed in all black, including a mask covering his entire face. The guy was standing by the door, and when they got about halfway up the driveway, the guy suddenly ran around to the back of my house. I told the kids that I didn't know who that was and that he must have been another trick-or-treater. The kids told me that the guy was definitely an adult. I was a little concerned, but I told the kids I didn't know and then sent them on their way. When they left, I wasn't sure if the kids were just messing with me or not. I didn't think they were, but I guessed it was possible. I decided to go around to the back of my house from the inside and look out the window to the backyard. When I did, I didn't really see anything, but the lighting back there was not the greatest. I wasn't quite sure what to make of it, but figured it was nothing, really. I went back to the living room and sat back down in my chair. Several minutes went by, and I didn't get any trick-or-treaters during that time. But then I heard the sound of my back door rattling like somebody was there and trying to get inside. I instantly thought back to what the kid had told me. I got up from my chair and walked over to the back of the house. When I got near the door, I looked out the window and saw a guy there. My view was mostly obstructed, but I could tell that somebody was there, and the person was wearing all black, including a mask. This was definitely the guy. Then he backed up and moved a little ways away from the door. I walked over and turned on the light switch to the outside backlight. When I did this, the guy took off running. I had a decent view of him as he left and ran back out of my yard and around to the front of my house. It was a man at least six feet tall and dressed in all black, covering his entire face as well. I couldn't tell what he looked like at all. I went back around to the front and saw the guy walk back out into the street and then out of my sight for the rest of that night. I got maybe two or three more trick-or-treaters. The guy never came back, and I was looking out my windows to make sure. I'm glad that kid told me about the guy. It creeps me out, thinking back on it. I really don't know who he was or what he wanted. I'm guessing that he was going to try to enter my house through the back or possibly even break in. When I turned on the light, I must have scared him off. But I don't know if he chose my house randomly or if there was a reason for it. I'm hoping that he never comes back. This story takes place years ago, when I was a kid. For some context, it was probably about 2003, and I was about 6 or 7 years old. Even though I was so young, I remember this night pretty well. I got really excited for Halloween when I was younger because I loved trick-or-treating and getting lots of candy. The whole day was always a fun time. I remember that year, I was going trick-or-treating with my older sister, who was about 10. Our parents trusted us to go trick-or-treating around the neighborhood by ourselves while they stayed back with my younger brother, who was very young, maybe around 3 years old. My parents would hand out candy and take care of him. Our neighborhood had lots of houses, and they were all roughly the same size. At the end of the street, there was a park, and then more streets of houses passed that. We planned to go down our street and then maybe two or three more of the closest other streets. We didn't want to go too far out, and our parents had also told us not to. 
I'm not sure what time we left to start, but the sun was just beginning to set. I was a race car driver for Halloween, and I don't remember what my sister was, but there were quite a few other kids out, and we saw some walking down the street as we were leaving. We went to the houses on our street. We knew some of the neighbors nearby, and they all said hi to us. Soon, though, we got towards the end of the street where we didn't know the people as well. It was around this time that I remember a van driving past us. The street was generally pretty quiet, but it wasn't uncommon for cars to drive by. The only reason I remember the van is because it drove past US, going the other way, and just a minute later, it drove past us again, going extremely slowly. Our parents had always told us to be aware of slow driving cars. It was probably just somebody with kids who were trick-or-treating, though. My sister and I went to the next street over where the van had come from. The street connected at the end, and we started at one side of the street, then went to all the houses, crossed to the other side, went to all those houses, and then wrapped around to the park. When we were almost done with that street, the van drove by us again for a third time. This time, my sister said something. It was still going very slowly, and my sister mentioned how we kept seeing this van. It certainly was a little strange. I remember that it was a tan conversion van, and I couldn't tell who was driving it or anything. As my sister and I were approaching the park at the end of our street, we saw the van once more. This time, it drove extremely slowly, and then stopped near us. We both looked at it, and the driver's window rolled down. There was a man driving it, who had a grayish beard, glasses, and was wearing a baseball cap. He said hi to us, and then held out a large bowl of candy. He said something like, hey, kids, come and get some candy. I remember he had a big smile on his face. Now, my sister and I were always told not to approach strangers, and, obviously, not to approach strange vehicles either. But being that it was Halloween, and it looked like he was just passing out candy, this seemed different. I mean, you would never knock on all of your neighbor's doors at night, but on Halloween, that was okay. We stood there just staring at the guy for a moment, and he told us that it was all right and waved us over. He had been maybe 20 feet away from us, and there were no other kids nearby in the street. My sister started walking towards the guy, so I followed. When we reached his driver's door, he told us to take as much candy as we wanted. There were a bunch of mini-sized candy bars in the bowl, and we each took two. I remember him telling us to take more, and he seemed super friendly. We each took some more, and then the guy told us that he actually had a lot more candy to give out. He said there was a bunch in the back of his van, and we were welcome to help ourselves. Then he pointed to the side door of the van. My sister and I both knew better. This was really weird, and although maybe he did have a bunch of candy back there, we didn't want to find out. I just shook my head, and my sister told the guy, no thanks. He was pretty friendly still, and said that it was alright. My sister and I then turned and started walking through the park on the path it had. The guy remained in his van and did not immediately drive away. It looked like he was just watching us as we walked farther and farther away from him. I felt a little creeped out by this. We walked through the park and eventually reached the next street over. Then we started going to the houses on that street, one at a time. My sister and I got lots of candy on that street, and our bags soon became full. We decided to head home, and that's when we saw the van once more. We sighed as it entered the street from the other end. My sister pointed it out, and we were pretty close to the park. As it approached, we actually started running to the park to get away from the van before the guy would see us. When we were able to get back on the path that led back to our street, we watched as the van drove by. It was still going extremely slowly. My sister and I talked about it a little and how weird it seemed. I was really young, but I knew something was off, and my sister, I'm sure, knew more than I did. We walked quickly back to our street and then we just had to walk down it until we got to our house. In the time that we were walking down our street, we did not see the van at all. Finally, we made it home and got inside the house. It was probably around 9 p.m. or so. 
When we got inside, we started eating candy and watching TV or movies. Shortly after arriving home, though, I was in the living room and noticed something out the front window, the van was driving by again. I called for my sister, but she was in the kitchen with my parents. Then the van actually stopped on the side of the road right in front of our house. My heart started racing, and I yelled for my sister and my parents. A few seconds later, they came into the room, and I showed them the van. My dad pulled back the blinds to look out the window, and when he did, the van began driving away. We told our parents how we kept seeing the van and how the guy gave us some candy. I remember our parents talking to us about strangers and stuff, but it seemed as though the guy was finally gone for good. It must have been a weekend or something, because I know we were staying up late that night. For the next couple of hours, I was eating candy and hanging out. I was in the living room, and my parents, I think, were in the kitchen. I was watching TV when I heard the sound of a car driving down the street outside. I raised the blinds a little and looked outside. The van was back. I watched it to see if it would drive past again. It was moving very slowly, as always. The van went a little past our house and then pulled over and stopped on the side of the street. This was really creepy. Then the driver's door of the van opened and the man actually got out. When I saw this, I started yelling for my parents again. They came into the room and the guy was now walking into the front yard. I said that the guy was back and my dad walked over to the front door of our house. He opened it, but as he was opening the screen door to go outside, the guy turned around, started running back to his van, got inside, and then drove away. I couldn't believe that he had returned yet again. This time, my parents called the police. I remember they came out a short time later and talked to all of us. We reported the guy for being really suspicious. After that, we didn't see him for the rest of the night. I'm really glad that he didn't come back. I didn't realize it at the time, but looking back, my sister and I possibly came very close to being abducted. We were never going to go into his van, but the fact that he wanted us to was very suspicious. I'm hoping that the guy wasn't actually harmful, but I don't know how else to explain his suspicious behavior. This is my story of Halloween last year. I was home, in my basement, watching a movie with a friend. She had come over to hang out with me after we both spent some time with other people in our friend group. Earlier, we had planned to watch some movies, though not necessarily scary ones. I had a few trick-or-treaters throughout the night as well. My house is in a quiet neighborhood where most properties are about an acre or two, but the neighborhood kids still come around to trick-or-treat. I kept a bowl of candy by the door, and we were interrupted about every 10 or 15 minutes. This lasted until about 9 or 9.30 p.m., and then it pretty much stopped. So, at almost 11 p.m., when the doorbell rang, I found it odd. I went upstairs from the basement while my friend stayed down. When I got to the front door, I saw someone dressed as a cat standing on the front step. The person looked a little too tall to be a kid, but I guessed it was possible. Their costume was sort of creepy on its own because the mask was big and very realistic looking. I couldn't tell at all what the person wearing it looked like. I decided to open the door because I was still up and had a bit of candy left. When I did, the person said, trick or treat, but I could tell by the voice that it was a man, not a child. I laughed a little and asked him his age. He didn't answer, but just stood there. I gave him a piece of candy as he stood there facing me. I mentioned that it was a little late for trick-or-treating, but the man didn't respond. In fact, he actually took a step closer to me. This seemed a little strange, so I stepped back inside and closed the door. I told him good night, then locked the door and noticed that the guy was still standing on my front step. It was pretty weird, but I just went back downstairs. After that, we unpaused the movie, and I figured that would be the last of the trick-or-treaters. However, only about a minute later, the doorbell rang again. I paused the movie and rolled my eyes. I had a feeling it was the guy dressed as the cat, but I wasn't sure what he wanted. 
I told my friend about him, and she followed me upstairs. When we both got up, we saw that the man was still standing there on the front step. I didn't know what he wanted, I had already given him candy, and he wasn't even a child, but a grown adult. I decided not to answer this time. We both watched him for about a minute or so, and then went back downstairs, hoping he would get the idea and leave. I unpaused the movie again, and for the next 10 minutes, everything was fine. We were on the couch in my finished basement, watching TV, which was the biggest television in the house. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw something. The basement was mostly below ground, but there were a couple of windows to the outside. I saw someone at one of the windows. When I focused on it, it was pretty dark, but I could see the cat face looking in. The man was there, looking at us. I screamed, and my friend followed shortly after. We both then ran back upstairs. I was panicking at first and didn't know what to do. Eventually, when I calmed down a little, I went to look out of a different window into the backyard. I didn't see anything, though. I turned on a light, which revealed that nobody was currently back there at all. He must have left. We then went around to every single window in the house and looked out. The man was now gone. He didn't come back for the rest of the night. I never found out who he was or what he actually wanted. The way he acted was just very creepy.